I tried beating the most defensive class in Terraria. Let me introduce you to Terraria's shield class. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get into the video, as you may or may not have noticed, I have recorded a video on the shield class before, but it did get several new updates and I wanted to make a better and overall more in-depth video about this entire class just because I really did love playing it the very first time I did. As always, every single class loadout will be on screen, but enough of that, let's get on to the video. I started off by spotting into the world, opening up a little starter bag just to get myself some iron tools because frankly, I hate the progression of early game Terraria and I love to unnecessarily speed things up. The first thing I did was craft myself a wood shield and this was our very first weapon. Essentially the way this whole class works, if you did not watch the previous video, is you double tap in a certain direction and you can dash into an enemy which deals damage. I checked out some of the other shields within the progression, I went to go chop down some trees, I built some NPC houses and as I went over to the desert I found myself a little pyramid. Now what could this pyramid contain? Hoping to get a sandstorm in a bottle which which of course I did not get. I got myself the magic carpet, which was fine, but the pyramid was a great way to enter the underground desert. Now the underground desert is full of neat chests and just like a bunch of ores, which is always nice to go through and mine. So that's basically what I did. I got myself some life crystals. As I came back to spawn, I got myself a piggy bank so I could put all my money in there because I did seem to have a decent amount of cash on me all throughout the early game, which was quite strange, but I'm not gonna complain. I went back down to the underground desert and just scoured through a bunch of life crystals they were all over the place and almost every corner I turned had one. So you know I just continued to, to go around this entire area. I found myself a glowing mushroom biome and I opened up some of the chests within there. Getting nothing really interesting, I came back to spawn, meet myself in Anvil, used up all of my life crystals, and I started work on a elevator. As I came back up to the surface, I crafted myself a gold shield, which was a very nice upgrade to the wooden shield that we previously had had, and is probably one of the best shields that we can get pre-Eye of Cthulhu or pre any other boss, as anything else kind of requires weird combinations of shields, which we still cannot get, and also the next shield being the Demonite shield, which we need to defeat the Eye of Cthulhu for, isn't accessible to us either. I chopped down some cacti, made some NPC houses, and after I continued work on the elevator, I came back to spawn and started building myself a little Eye of Cthulhu arena. Using all of the ore that I've gathered throughout my playtime, I crafted myself a full set of golden armor. I got myself a teensy weensy little bit more HP after picking up some life crystals within a mushroom biome and while I was goofing around I got a message saying that an evil presence is watching us meaning that we don't actually even have to summon in the eye of Cthulhu and we can just wait for it to spawn. Now thinking that the boss fight is going to be hard I kind of over prepared I nearly have full HP and I mean I was kind of right to assume that because the only way we could really deal damage was to bump into the eye of Cthulhu and we would have to take damage ourselves but that is not what happened at all. I recommend you check out the boss fight this is how the whole thing went. As you can see, we obliterated the Eye of Cthulhu and it was it was very easy. I completely forgot that as it attacks you, you can like skip its immunity frames if you have the shield. I don't know how this works, but that was that. As I was running around in the ice biome, I found myself a creeper, which didn't explode. And I don't know why it spawned in frankly. Once the Eye of Cthulhu was beat, I went over to the Crimson. Now you might wonder why I have these orbs in the Crimson, and that's because I have a Fargo mod on, which allows me to have the Crimson and Corruption at the same time. I think it's called like best of both worlds or something along those lines because everyone keeps on asking but yeah that's that's why I have that. Anyways I was ready to almost basically start fighting the Eater of Worlds. Now there was a bit of a dilemma I didn't know what was going to spawn the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu so you know that just I guess we're going to find out sooner or later and I really hate the mobs within the Crimson biome they, they just spawn way too often and it's such a hassle to defeat all of them so here you can just see me suffer with every single mob while trying to build myself an arena. Put down in the comments below if you have the same thing early game in Terraria because it's like a very common thing for me and I don't know why it happens. Anyways, I broke the last orb and we summoned in the Eater of Worlds. Now, we basically have the same exact loadout as we did when we fought the Eye of Cthulhu. So, we didn't really upgrade too much, but 
I was a bit cocky, a little bit overly confident, and, you know, decided to fight it regardless. You can see how this boss fight went, and, you know, as you can probably tell, we took it out quite easily. But once I came back to spawn, I got myself a Nightmare Pickaxe and a Demonite Shield. Along with this, we were now able to almost craft ourselves a full set of Guard Armor, which is the very first armor set within this mod. Of course, I didn't have enough Shadow Scales, so I had to go and get a little bit more by beating the Eater of Worlds, and once I did that, I crafted myself a full set of Guard Armor, which all of the stats you will be able to see on screen, giving us a total of 31 defense pre-Skeletron boss fight. Using my Nightmare Pickaxe, I went mining in the underworld with an obsidian skin potion and a mining potion. I got myself a plethora of hellstone and once I did have enough hellstone and obsidian I came all the way back to spawn and I crafted myself a hellstone shield. With this brand new found power I went to search for the dungeon and apparently it was on the left side of the world. Since it was nighttime, I immediately summoned in Skeletron and took him out within mere seconds. There was some weird frame skip immunity frame thing again with this boss where we can just run into him as he's running into us and we can just absolutely demolish him so it made the boss fight quite unfair but don't worry this doesn't go for every single boss in the game most bosses are genuinely quite difficult and we just got lucky with this one anyways while i was in the dungeon uh goblin army actually managed to pull up on us but before coming back i was trying to get as many life crystals and water candles as possible to max out our hp and then also later be able to craft the battle cry which essentially increases mob spawn rates making farming easier in the future yeah guys like after you play terraria for over 1000 hours the same grinding gets a little bit tiresome so you know you you gotta up the spawn rates once in a while. But anyways, I spent the rest of my time searching for a Muramasa shield within the dungeon and I just couldn't find one. Before I could find it, I decided to come back to spawn to take a little mental break and go fight the goblins instead. So that's what I did for basically like the next five minutes. And after I was tired of that, I went back to the dungeon and with the battle cry, I was able to up the spawn rates, get more keys and finally find myself the magic shield. After all these shenanigans passed, I went over to the jungle and started gathering a bunch of jungle materials in order to craft myself the grass shield. I think this consisted of like jungle spores, stingers, vines, something along those lines. I didn't even mean to make all those rhymes by committing all of these crimes, calling out terraria chimes. Yeah. Anyways though, I crafted myself the grass shield as soon as I came back to spawn and combining all of the shields that we previously had, which is the hellstone, the magic shield, the demonite shield, and the grass shield we can finally make a shield called the lunar shield which is like the knight's edge version of the shields and it's pretty freaking good this also has a special ability that costs 30 mana and it can shoot lava shields towards the player's cursor which kind of makes it like a ranged weapon but i didn't really have too much mana on me so that was a bit of a bummer but i did increase it later within the game anyway since we now had the ability to craft more and more shields i went over to the desert farmed out more materials i also farmed out more materials in the jungle and as i came back to spawn I crafted myself the cactus shield which had no use whatsoever it literally wasn't even part of any crafting recipe but it did deal a decent amount of damage and I just crafted it so you know you guys would be happy and be like oh well, at least he crafted all the shields. Yeah, that was cool. He, he really went through the whole mod. I really did go through the whole mod. Anyways, after this, I got myself a gravity flip potion, bro. And I went to explore all of the islands using the gravitation potion. And basically this time I was looking for a sky mill and I was also looking for a certain shield. Once I stumbled upon the correct sky island, I found myself the star fury, which we could turn into the star shield. And this shield is actually quite a useful material for shields later down the road that we'll be able to craft so we very much so needed this shield anyways after this i was kind of chilling and i wanted to go fight the wall of flesh so i went down to the underworld and made a massive arena and then i spent the rest of the time farming for guy voodoo dolls and i swear this is probably the longest it's ever taken me to get a single guide voodoo doll i sat there like an idiot for literally i don't know 30 minutes and i couldn't get it no matter what i literally ended up quitting the game Game and just coming back like another time to finish off my hunt for guide voodoo demons. I died countless times, I rage quit, I rejoined, but after some luck and patience we finally found a guide voodoo demon and I made the summon for the wall of flesh. I went to go fight the wall and well just take a look at what happened. <laughs> I 
managed to beat it on my first try. It wasn't too difficult. I just spammed the projectiles. I didn't even use too much of the shield itself and our defense carried us. Anyways, we are now in hard mode and we can go do fun hard mode stuff like break all of the altars and have a bunch of wraiths attacking us. Did you know that every single time you break a demon altar, a wraith spawns? So if we break them all at once using a quality of life mod, this is kind of what happens and it's not very fun. It's definitely not very fun. But anyways, we went through the whole pickaxe progression and I got myself a mithril pickaxe and basically all of the new cool stuff that comes with that such as the mithril anvil and a titanium forge. And as soon as we were able to access titanium, I went and crafted myself a titanium shield, which honestly wasn't any better than a lunar shield, except like it dealt more contact damage, but it didn't have the projectile, so it wasn't really too worthwhile to use. But anyways, I went over to the sky island shortly after this and I farmed out some wyverns to get myself enough souls of flight and I waited for a giant harpy feather so I can craft myself a set of harpy wings. In order to craft myself a giant harpy feather from a harpy banner, I need to get myself the solidifier, which meant I had to go kill the king slime. So this is a little fight that I had with the king slime. As you can see, it was very, very fun and cool and neat and probably the easiest boss I've ever fought, but we took it out and very shortly after this, I crafted myself harpy wings, which was fantastic because now we have obtained the ability to fly. I maxed out my mana, eating crystal stars, and then I went farming for souls. Remember that time I bought the soul of a Lithuanian man from Temu? Bro, that was a crazy day. Anyways, I farmed out for souls of night first, then I went to go get souls of light, and then I had to come back and get more souls of night because I couldn't craft all the summons for the bosses. But once I did craft all of the summons for the mechanical bosses, I went back to get more souls of night, and then I frantically searched for the goblin tinker, which was a bit of a hassle, because I set the mob spawn rates to like max, meaning that not only the goblin tinker will spawn faster, but also all of the random enemy mobs. So that was, that wasn't too fun, but I did manage to finally find him. And as I traversed back to spawn, I crafted myself the charm of myths as while i was searching for the goblin tinker i managed to defeat a mimic anyways during all this time i was just waiting for it to turn tonight and you know passing the time by by flirting with the nurse and the mechanic and all of the town npcs and the dryad don't flirt with him i'm not going to i passed the time quite well frankly by the way, for anyone that wants to know, search up like Dryad Rule 34. I'm sorry to ruin your childhood. I, I will be the enemy of your childhood. I, I said I'm sorry, but I don't apologize. This is pretty is some pretty cool stuff, man. Anyways, once it was nighttime, I went to go fight the destroyer. I got myself a mana flower and I absolutely destroyed, shredded, ate. I don't know any other words to use, but you kind of get the point. We, we took out the destroyer quite easily and it was quite a nice boss fight. Without any hesitation, I went straight for the twins. And we also managed to take out the twins without too much trouble either. Right after this, I crafted myself the Hallowed Shield. And we just needed a little bit more Hallowed Bars to craft ourselves a full set of Protector Armor. Which was the armor set from the Hallowed Bars. I was waiting for nighttime again because, well, the night did end after we beat the twins. It was kind of a very clutch situation there. But anyways, I went over to the jungle and I'm in my a life fruit farm thinking that you know I could dig out a bunch of random tunnels now and they'll pay off in the future as I'd be able to you know farm out life fruit and I'd get more HP and make my playthrough easier because I'm a very bad terraria player and I need all the buffs that I can get but yeah after that I came back to spawn and I reforged basically everything that I could to like warding to get as much defense as possible and I also bought just an ungodly amount of potions so I can get better buffs before fighting Skeletron Prime because Skeletron Prime is one of the harder bosses within this mod because you can't really cheese him as well as you can most other bosses. Anyways, it was nighttime and I spawned in Skeletron Prime only for him to be enraged. And I got one-shotted, but you know, I had to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more humble, and I, I waited for it to really turn to night, and then I actually summoned him in. And here's the boss fight.
As you can see, it did take quite a while, but you know, we took him out and once he was taken out, I crafted myself the Aegis Shield, which is basically like an upgraded Hallowed Shield and it had an ability where it can use up 150 mana and then we become invincible for a little bit, but honestly this wasn't too good because it didn't last too long, but hey, I mean invincibility is invincibility and I definitely did try to use this ability a couple of times. After this, I also crafted myself the True Lunar Shield, which was like the True Knight's Edge version of the shield and I went to go fight the Destroyer and this time it was a piece of cake. We demolished the destroyer as we can spam the swords and they dealt crazy damage. After beating the destroyer a couple of times, I crafted myself the full set of protector armor, which you will be able to see on screen. And right after taking out a little goblin army, I went to go mine some chlorophyte. During this time, I found myself the plantera bulb and I also managed to go and fight the queen bee as we needed a bee shield in order to finish off like the very last shield of the game. So I got that. And while in the Queen Bee Arena, since it was quite big, I decided to summon in Plantera and just go for it and fight it. Using the True Lunar Shield, we just spammed the Knight's Edge Blades into Plantera and we took this Salad boss out very, very quickly, earning ourselves the Seed Shield, which was basically like the Seedler version of the shields. But hey, look what it says, it throws nuts when hitting an enemy. These nuts. I hope you still find that one funny, huh? What a throwback, 2015 or something? Anyways, after the salad boss was out, I went over to Golem's Temple, I cleared it out, got myself a bunch of cells and the summon for the Eclipse, and once we left the jungle, I came back to spawn and crafted myself the Chlorophyte Shield. And after that, I crafted myself the True Age Shield, which was like the true Excalibur version of the shields. I went over to the dungeon, turned on infinite spawn rates, and finally the dungeon for ectoplasm and once I came back to spawn with enough ectoplasm I crafted myself the specter shield which you will be able to see on screen as well. I decided to farm out the paladins because we needed a certain armor set from them and once I spent a whole lot of time farming them I did manage to get myself the chest plate and the leggings but I still lacked the helmet. Since it was daytime I used this opportunity to start the solar eclipse and I spent the entire time farming more Mothrons to get myself the Broken Hero Shield. Now, once I did get the Broken Hero Shield, I quickly crafted myself the Terra Shield, which was absolutely OP. And upon killing more Mothrons, I got myself Mothron Wings, which was pretty neat. I decided to farm out the Solar Eclipse to its bitter end, taking out more and more Mothrons. While the Solar Eclipse was still going, I also placed myself some pumpkins as we're gonna need to fight the Pumpkin Moon. And then I continued on fighting Paladins up until I got myself the headpiece for the armor set that we we're trying to get. Upon getting that, I finally got myself a full set of paladin armor and I traversed my way over to Golem's temple and went to go fight Golem. This is how this boss fight went. As you can see, it ended pretty freaking quickly with our overpowered shield and our 102 defense. So that was that and very soon after I went to go fight the pumpkin moon. This was a little bit of a hassle as their shield just didn't do that much damage against the pumpkins, but hey, at least we weren't dying and we were on the right track to do exactly and get the exact things that we wanted. So upon defeating a couple more pumpkins, we got ourselves the Horseman Shield, which will come in handy when crafting the Zenith Shield at the very, very end of the game. I went to go near the Sky Islands and I triggered a Martian Madness Invasion. I needed to fight the Martian Saucers, which is probably my least favorite mini boss within the game as they always kill me, to get myself the Influx Shield. And very quickly, I managed to actually get myself that shield. I went straight over to the dungeon after finishing the Martian Madness event and went to go fight the lunatic cultist and this is how the fight went <laughs> As you can see, we took it out without a problem whatsoever and I didn't really get anything from it except the Ancient Manipulator and as soon as the Cultist was out, I went to go take on the Pillars. Taking out all of the Pillars and leaving one Pillar left, I decided to go and get a bunch of various different shields. The first one being the Shield of Timber, which required every single wooden shield to craft. So I made this and then combining a bunch of other various different shields, I made myself the Shield of Life. which was was a very very powerful shield and one of the best shields pre moon lord i went to go take out the solar pillar which was the very last pillar and upon taking it out i quickly came back to spawn buffed up and went to go fight the moon lord and this is exactly how the entire fight went down We 
We took out the Moon Lord with not too many problems, but I still needed to get myself a bunch of various different shields that did drop from Moon Lord, and the only way I can get it was, well, by of course defeating the Moon Lord. Upon taking him out, I also got myself the Lunar Shield, which was pretty freaking cool, but we can make something even better by, you know, getting the rest of the shields required. Anyways, after this, I went to go farm out Moon Lord a couple more times up until I got myself a shield called the Meow Shield, which was, you know, like the Meowmer version of the shield, and it shot out cats. And then upon defeating the Moon Lord a couple more times, I got myself the Stellar Shield, which was the Star Wrath version of the shields. I crafted myself a Copper Shield, and then I went to go craft myself the Zenith Shield. And this was absolutely overpowered. I mean, this was stupid. I then went to go fight the Lunatic Cultist as I needed a little bit more fragments for a very certain crafting recipe that was very much so end game related. Once I had enough fragments and before taking out all the pillars, I came back to spawn and crafted myself the Royal Guard set. I took out the rest of the pillars, took on Moon Lord one final time, and with the strength of end game post Moon Lord shield class, we absolutely clobbered Moon Lord, leaving us with nothing left to explore within this mod. This was the full breakdown video gameplay playthrough of Terraria shield class and I really hope you enjoyed it. I took a massive break from YouTube. It's nice to be back. I hope I can up the quality of the videos even more so than before but overall I hope you enjoyed this. Drop a like if you did like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. This has been Boyo. Peace out.